He is a physician and politician who's been very outspoken in the healthcare debate. Joining us on Newsmax TV is Congressman Michael Burgess of Texas, chairman of the Congressional Healthcare Caucus. Welcome to Newsmax, Congressman. Thanks, Kathleen. Thanks for having me on. A lot of numbers have been thrown out about the cost to reform health care. Obama's estimates are one to two trillion of upfront costs with 313 billion in budget cuts, he says. What do you believe this is really going to cost us? I don't think anyone has a clear idea at this point. Uh, one of our big problems over here on the House side is no one's actually seen this uh, legislation that we're supposed to be marking up this very week. Obama says that spending now will save us money in the long run. Will the plan be a way to really save money on health care or just a move that's going to put us further into debt? Well, let me, uh, let me just say that, I, that I, I do agree that if you spend money wisely in health care, you do avoid some larger expenditures down the road. I think the, uh, the, the second part of your question, though, is, is where I would part company with the president. And I, it, it becomes so difficult to, to be able to actually measure the impact of some of these things that, that you are doing. And bear in mind, we're making wholesale changes or at least the reported drafts that we've seen are wholesale changes in the way that medicine is practiced in this country. Uh, we are going to move from a system of primarily employer-sponsored insurance where currently 160 million Americans get their coverage. We're gonna to move to a, a, a much more centrally controlled government-run system. Now, it won't be instantaneous. It's, it is going to be incremental. But that fundamental shift of, of where the actual power for those making those medical decisions is going to go from, you know, patients, yes, employers, less, yes, insurance companies, to primarily to government is, uh, is something that I don't know that the country yet appreciates. The White House has been talking about various cuts and tax increases. How likely is it that we will see tax hikes to pay for this plan? I, I don't think there's any question there will have to be tax hikes. The question is, where do they come from and, and, and who do they hit? Um, we've heard a, f a, few, uh, a, a few new things this past couple of days, um, but honestly, the, uh, the, the number and amount of, of tax increases, are, I think, are going to be startling. Max Baca says we can save money by eliminating certain treatments and tests, meaning that the government will tell you what you can and cannot do to your patients. As a physician, how does that sit with you? Well, you know, that's the, and, and herein is the problem. When I, when I earlier alluded to the, the fundamental shift in how medicine is practiced in this country, uh, I don't like it when insurance companies do it to me. I don't, certainly didn't like it when the HMOs tried to dictate care. It's, uh, there's nothing about the government being in charge of that that's going to make it any bit more palatable to, to doctors or patients across this, across this country. Okay, President Obama says if we have a health insurance plan that we like, we can keep it. What are the chances that will actually happen, especially with the strong possibility that a public option could hurt private insurance companies? I think the, uh, you know, this is one of the great fantasies of the healthcare debate as we've, as we've seen it uh, unfold. And it even goes back last year into the, into the presidential campaign. Um, when President Obama had several of us over to the White House in March to talk about this, he stressed that the one thing he would not accept was the status quo. And then the very next thing he said was, but if you like what you have, you can keep it. Well, wait a minute. You can't reject the status quo and then say, if you like what you have, you can keep it, when essentially over well over half the country, 60% of the country has insurance through employer-sponsored insurance. Another 10 million get their insurance through, through, through direct contracting with an insurance company. And of those groups, 80% like it. So how in the world are you gonna do something that completely changes the way healthcare is delivered in the country if you don't of necessity change it for, those, for that 50% of the population? You're gonna to have to grind things down on the provider side. But I'm telling you, if you do that, then you're not gonna have anyone there to see the patients. So what have we done for access? Not a lot. We may have helped uh, affordability, we may have helped control cost, but the end result is a system that uh, will be just as unsustainable, if not more unsustainable, than the system as it exists today. If a public option does someday exist, do you expect that small businesses could start bailing from providing health insurance to employees, knowing that folks can get that coverage from the government? Well, not just small business, of course they will, uh, but even medium and large business. Uh, look, if you have a 50, 
$1,000 a year employee. Uh, Kaiser Family Foundation uh, last year estimated that the cost of providing employer-sponsored insurance was $12,000 a year, of which the employer pays about two-thirds. So the employer pays $8,000 a year for that $50,000 a year employee's salary. And do the quick math, and you realize that the employer can save $4,000 a year by paying the 8% fine and stopping the insurance. So the employer will make the, the, the best business decision, the best financial decision for the business. They'll have to in order to stay competitive because every other company will be doing the same thing. Okay. President Obama is hoping to have a plan in place by the August recess. Why are we in such a hurry? We need to not look at the short view of this next election cycle or even the next presidential election. But let's look at the 30, 40, 50 year view and try to make sure that we're, we're, we're making decisions that are in the best interests of the Americans that are going to come long after we've, we've gone on to our rewards, but the Americans who will be here in 2050 and 2060 who are having to live with the effects of this legislation that we now feel pressured to pass within the next couple of weeks' time. That makes no sense. It's more important for us to get this right than it is for us to get it done by the August recess. Uh, haste makes waste in, in this situation, or in the popular vernacular, speed kills. Mm -hmm. Congressman, as a physician, a patient, and a legislator, in your opinion, what's the best way to reform the health care system right now? Well, anything that you do that keeps the patient at the center of the universe is, in my opinion, going to be good. And anything that you do that increases the value of the interaction that occurs between the doctor and patient in the treatment room is going to be good. I've already outlined to you one of the things that I believe would be important, and that's keeping the, the purchasing power in the hands of the patient rather than the hands of the employer or the hands of the government or the hands of the insurance company. If the patient and doctor are directly contracting with those decisions that are in the patient's best interest to either get the patient well or keep the patient well, better decisions are going to be made. All right, Congressman Michael Burgess from Texas, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate the time, thank you. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV. Homeland Security advises every family to have an emergency radio. It's essential for severe weather, power failures, even terrorism. Now Newsmax is offering you an emergency radio absolutely free. Just pay shipping and get the radio, plus a free trial subscription to Newsmax magazine. Go online to Newsmax.com to check out the details of this great offer. Get your free emergency radio today. Just call 800-NEWSMAX. Make sure your family is protected. Call now. 800-NEWSMAX.